Facebook feed, I saw yet again that old tired argument of that question. Jet fuel only burns at 1,500 degrees, and since steel melts at 2,700 degrees, 9-11 was a conspiracy. If it was a conspiracy, I do not care. What I am upset about is the retarded metallurgical things that you guys are saying. This is a piece of half-inch thick steel, A36, structural steel, designed for structures. This is a 250-pound anvil. I'm going to put this steel in the back of this anvil, and I'm going to lift this 250-pound anvil with this bar of steel. Now, in my furnace, I have an identical piece of half-inch bar of steel, just like this, and it's going to be around 1,800 degrees, just 300 more than jet fuel, when it comes out. It's very hot, but not melted. Obviously, it is not melted. I put this in the anvil. Now watch this. I'm going to take my pinky finger. My pinky finger, half inch solid steel. Check it out. It's a freaking noodle. Your argument is invalid. Get over it. It's not the job. That's what I'm talking about. That was hot, right? Right? No. What do we think? Maybe you should have read the NIST report. Because no World Trade Center steel samples they tested showed temperature signs above 600 degrees. If you have a flame at 750 degrees, you can hold that flame under a steel beam forever and you'll never reach a high enough temperature to bend steel, let alone melt it. Well, these floor models didn't fail in the furnaces. You know, they all passed the test for two hours. Two hours, of course, is longer than either of the buildings do. Now, everybody, give it up for my man! Architect Richard Gage. So I'm taking time out of my busy day to try to put to rest one of the more moronic things I've seen on the news for the past 14 years, and that's saying something. Through my Facebook feed, I saw yet again that old, tired argument. Airplanes crash into two buildings. Buildings catch fire. Buildings collapse at nearly the rate of free fall. A third building, not hit by an airplane, catches fire and also collapses. This one literally at the rate of free fall. For the first time in history, steel skyscrapers collapse because of fire. Three times in one day. I'm so sick and tired of this argument. Now, I'm not going to make any claims as to what did or did not happen. Although, if it was a conspiracy, other than the official one involving the 19 hijackers, I do care. But what I'm upset about is the absurd engineering argument that you guys are making. I'm not arguing the facts. Two airplanes did hit two buildings, and three buildings did collapse. But if you think the one caused the other, then you've been duped. This is a 110-story skyscraper. This is the top 15 stories. Do you see how the 95 stories below are supporting the 15 stories above? Okay, now, here I have an identical 15-story section of the skyscraper. Same structure, same mass, but nothing below it. And I want you to see something very interesting. If you drop these at the same time, According to the official story, this one will reach the ground at the same time as this one, essentially in free fall, as they put it. One has nothing below it. The other has 90,000 tons of structural steel supporting it. Check it out. This one obviously can't reach the ground at the same time as this one. Now check this out. Do you see the top 15 stories crushing the 95 stories below? No, you don't. The top block disintegrates by itself in the first few seconds without even impacting the building below. And then the building below begins to destroy itself. What you see are waves of explosions ripping the building apart, 
pulverizing nearly all the concrete to a fine powder and ejecting the steel up to 600 feet in all directions. The top 15 stories couldn't do that in a pancaking collapse. And they certainly couldn't reach the ground anywhere near as quickly as this one, which has nothing but air below it. Your argument is invalid. Get over your cognitive dissonance. Find a shrink.